people that are sharing are real, proven, tested, in the trenches, winning at a high level today. Welcome back to another episode of All or Nothing in Real Estate. I'm your host, Matt Smith, the founder of All or Nothing in Real Estate, this podcast. I forgot the name there for a second. Um, it's All or Nothing in Real Estate. This podcast is a movement to give back to this amazing industry. It's given so much to me and my family. Um, and today we have a um, an episode that um, is kind of going to be a brain dump. Um, I'm joined by the wonderful Jenna Swift. Jenna, welcome. Hola. Jenna is Director of Operations and many, many, many other things in our organization here at Massimith Real Estate Group. And she was alongside me at what I am hearing and I probably agree with was the best event of the year, maybe the best event of all time. Um, and so we're going to unpack that event for you if you weren't able to make it, give you our perspectives, give you our action items, our takeaways, um, and hopefully help you become a better agent, better leader understand what the high performers of today's world are doing, talking about discussing, etc. So, Jenna, how was Tahoe? Chet Black Tahoe 2024, how was that? I think it was the best one yet, personally. Um, I, I feel like every time I go to one of these events, how I approach it is different. Um, I think you just never know what, what where it's going to go and what you're going to take away from it and what you're going to contribute to it. Um, and this one, I feel like I approached it very, very differently, um, but I got so much out of it and I hope I was able to contribute back to others as well. But um, there was just so many amazing speakers, um, so many themes that came throughout everyone kind of in alignment again, which almost happens every event um, where everyone's kind of in alignment with what they're saying, but um, it was phenomenal. So I want to, I want to unpack that. Um, it's crazy how that works. So I know I've gotten to know John um, very, very well. John Cheplak. Um, he's a, I consider him a great friend. He's a mentor. He's my coach, and it's just a privilege to 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 be able to call him all those things and go to. I don't know if we've missed a Cheplak event in the last four years. I don't think we have. Um, and what's crazy is I've also been. I was. I did not speak at this one. I did host a mastermind, but um, I did not speak at this one. But I've been fortunate to speak at other ones. And I know how that process works. So let me take you behind the scenes really quick. Cause not, and there's, there's a reason I'm sharing this is it's a, a text or a call from John. Hey, would you like to contribute at this blank X, Y, Z event? Yep. What do you want me to talk about? Whatever's relevant. I trust you go. Right. Sometimes there's a little guidance, but like that's the end of the conversation because the difference is the people that are sharing are real proven, tested, in the trenches, winning at a high level today. And I think to unpack what you said is like the alignment of all the speakers. It's not like there's a speaker committee or there's a guide to follow or, I mean, it's a very, very well-ran event. So don't take that for anything other than it's it's John putting forward leaders that he trusts to lead how they see fit. And so the alignment that you saw and noticed just happens organically. And I think it's just really important to understand that. Like it's, there's, there's no method to that other than that alignment and those common themes that we heard throughout are just because that's what works mm -hmm. because these are proven people that are winning and high, winning at a high level that are sharing. Yeah. And that's the thing is one thing that's always said is um, it's just different in these rooms. Like it's just different. And it's because it's not, we all have high standards, we're high producers, we're committed people, we execute at a high level. And so those speakers, like what you're saying, it's not just some rando that put out a cool lead magnet and said, hey, I know exactly how to do everything and they've never done anything in their lives. They're people who are proven doing it. They're in the battlefield right now, um, crushing it. Yep. Um, just a quick side note. I'm so proud of you for saying we and including yourself in that. Like, that's awesome. Um, Cause you certainly are, but you haven't always done that. So I haven't. just, yeah, really cool. And if you're not watching on YouTube, you can't see the smile on her face, but it's really big. So Thank you. Um, kudos to you. Um, so 
another thing I wanted to really unpack is that um, I've I've talked with John a couple of times since the event um, for different different reasons. One to be a coachy call, masterminds, et cetera. But anyway, um, he unpacked a little bit of his takeaways, and I thought, um, and in the feedback that he got, so I kind of want to start there. Is the feedback that he got from so many people is it's the best one ever, um, and a lot of similar to what Jenna said. And what um, what he shared was, and he shared this from the stage too, but it's crazy to hear that these events keep leveling up and why, and, and he unpacked why he thought that was. And it's because of the community, the environment, the, um, the people that went before that they saw and listened to and learned from. And they're like, how can I take that at this high contribution level and even elevate it and then elevate it and then elevate it. And these people like, these are the top performers in the world giving their playbooks on something that's winning at a high level, nothing held back. And just to, like the contribution level without nobody selling anything, they're just giving. And it's crazy for a, we we're talking before this started, the human psychology is weird, um, right? But like, I think there's something really important to understand if you're listening to this, there's a reason these people keep winning at a high level because they give without the expectation of anything in return. It's weird how that works, right? Um, but anyway, I think that's that's just really important to understand it as before we kind of unpack this stuff and give you our takeaways. I think it's really under you understand the context of this event, the caliber of the people in the rooms, like number one in the world in their brand, number one in their states, thousands of units a year, top teams from every, like you name it, they were there, right? It's the who's who of real estate. Um, and uh giving their playbooks like it's just it's uh it's unmatched i've been to a lot of event a lot of events and the the cheplak community i'm just blessed to be a part of it um there's there's so many so many takeaways that, that i always have yeah i i'll say i think because i've gotten so used to it now like the contribution level it it always i have to remind myself just how rare that is and especially in the real estate industry I remember when I first started in marketing and we would talk about, you know, starting all or nothing in real estate and it's like, all right, yeah, we want to give this away. And I'm like, um, this is like our playbook. Like this is like what we do in our business. Are you sure? You know, but just the absolute contribution and, and the way that that's changed my mindset and how I approach things. Um, I, it's such a rare thing to be in, to have people who are just so, supportive and wanting you to succeed too it's not just me and and all about me and my ego it's about others and helping others elevate their business and be better and become and grow more and grow personally and professionally 100 percent um i think that like i'm just unpacking like all and a lot of you that were at the event um shared that you listen to this podcast right and so thank you guys for for sharing that with me thank you for your perspective and just like humbly I was just like in awe of all the people that that actually follow us and listen and and apply these things and so like that's all the that's all the motivation that I need to continue to give everything away right like just if I can help other people win that's again that's why we started this thing and um so thank you guys for for sharing that I really appreciate it and it really kind of not that my fire went away but it just it makes the fire even bigger uh for me to more passionate to give back at a higher level so Hopefully we can do that today. Um, Jenna, I'll let you get us started. What were the common, you mentioned commonalities, the common themes, mm -hmm. the common takeaways that you saw throughout the two, to, actually three days of this event. Um, what were those? I would say some of the top ones, one, executing, uh, playing full out, executing at a high level, um, not just checking a box and then letting it be and forgetting about it for the rest of your life, but actually like following through and committing to things. Um, that was a big one. Copywriting, the importance of copywriting, um, the power of copywriting, and then specifically with that email. That's something that was mentioned. If I go through my notes, I think I have that written at least 50 times from different speakers, people who are talking about database management, people who are talking about listings, people who are talking about marketing, people who are talking about operations, all of them talking about the power of email. Um, so that was another really, really big theme. And then just leadership as a whole, um, is always a really big theme at these events. And that's where I feel like I grow the most in these events for sure too. hundred percent. Um, like it's really easy to say, Hey, execution was a theme. 
But what's crazy is I've been to other events and this is not talking trash on other events. There's a lot of great events that I've been to. But sometimes they're, they, sometimes there's people that are trying to sell you on something, trying to give you a theory, an idea, um, or sell you a product or pitch you this thing or follow me because I have this thing that I can tell you, you can sell real estate and you don't have to work hard or whatever, right? Like all these crazy things that we have and some of them may work, right? But, um, the top performers in the room and the, in the world that we're in the room, the common theme that Jenna started with was execution at a high level, right? Like how many of us have a clear understanding of what is our daily minimum standard of activity we need to do today to win the day. Clearly specific, like my mentor Ed Milet says, specificity, my favorite word, um, is that you have to be specific, right? And so I think vagueness kills progress. Vagueness kills success. Um, and we, we operate in vagueness a lot. I think clarity is kindness. I think we should be kind to ourselves and give us clarity on what do I need to do to win today? It doesn't mean you have to do 86 things on your to-do list. If you could only do one, what's the most important? Specifically, how much, by when, and then execute. And then wake up and do it again tomorrow. And then the compound effect of that over time produces amazing results. Um, I'm reminded of the definition of mastery. I think too many people are trying to, myself included, fall for shiny objects or want this... Like we all are, a lot of us listening are, we, we're busy. We were spending a lot of plates. We're trying to do a lot of things at once, but more isn't always better. Better is always better. And so how can you find one thing that will move the needle the most for your business and go all in and master it and execute it at a high level? Um, definition of my definition of mastery that I stole from someone else. I don't remember who, um, is you learn it, you do it and you do it enough where you can teach it to others. Once you can teach it to others, it's a whole nother ball game. Now you can add something else to your plate. But how many of us, if we were thinking of the core fundamentals of our business, whether it's marketing or lead gen or lead conversion or scripting or um, anything, right? Um, any Name any aspect of the business. Could you really teach a class on it specifically? Could you stand up in front of a room of, of 300, 533 people, however many people, and teach them how to do it? If not... It's probably let's ex continue executing on that thing. And then once we can teach it to others, now let's find something else to master. What are your thoughts on that, Jenna? Um, I mean, I'm 100% with you. I think one thing that's important to note is it's really easy, probably even listening to this and being in the event too, to, to see all this cool stuff that people are doing and to want to take it and implement it immediately and like change everything. Yep. And one thing a lot of people will tell you and that we want to remind you listening to this is like what Matt said is sticking to, are you executing on the things that you've already said you would do? You don't need to go in and overhaul and add on all these shiny objects and overcomplicate the crap out of everything. You need to just find what those basic minimum things are that you need to do to move the needle and then just commit to them and execute. If you're committing to them and you're executing fully and they're not working, then absolutely let's talk about adding new things and finding new strategies and all of that stuff. But if you're not executing to begin with, you can add on as much as you want. It's going to get you nowhere. Yeah, it's yeah, really well said. I think that a lot of people are just... <sighs> I'm going to sit, share a quote and I'm going to, I'm going to risk relationship with those of you listening and this may apply. It may not, but for most of us, I think it applies and it applies to myself. The success you're looking for is in the work you're avoiding. You can't get around the work. A lot of us will find an excuse not to do the thing we know we need to do because something else is funner or new or it's shiny or it's, we think it'll, um, we tell ourselves the excuse of, well, we can do that and we'll do this other thing later. Like, find the basic fundamentals that will move the needle and just go all in on that thing and execute consistently. Once you mastered it, add another thing. Like, um, I mean, I've got pages and page, I've got a whole notebook of notes that we're going to unpack here for you today. But if I also have ones that are priority that we're going to implement and the rest of them are for a later discussion right now, there's a couple little tweaks here, a little tweak there that we're going to change. We're going to implement, but the big things like there's like two, and like, that's all we're going to implement and we're going to master those. And then we'll do the other things if, if they're still a priority at that time. And so I think we just, we try to do everything at once. And like, 
let's talk about in our relationships or maybe if you're a leader listening, if we try to be everything to everyone, we end up being nothing to no one. It's the same as true in your business. If you try to do everything at once, you're not doing anything at a high level. And so, um, yeah, less is more. Um, copywriting. Yeah, that was huge. Um, and I'll, let me tell you the type of room this was too. I, f I know and follow a lot of these people on social media and we're friends. And um, ever since that event, I've seen everybody actually take action and their copywriting is phenomenal. And it's like, it's, it's really good to see. And it's, and it's again, it's from contribution, right? Like there's copyright out there that, that are a playbook on how to manage your database or how to do like, that is like, holy shit, that's proprietary. Nope. I'm making it public and I'm con contributing to the real estate world. Right. Um, and it's, uh, it's just really, really cool for me to see another thing. Another reason success leaves clues, right? How many rooms do you go to where you don't see the action taken of the biggest takeaways? I think there's a lot to be said about that too. It's execution, right? Yeah, that was something actually in my ride home or ride to the airport with my taxi driver, who's a very interesting character. But he, was he better uh, than the ride there? Um, it was better, but different. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, hey, let's 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 let's, let's discuss your ride from the airport to Tahoe really quick. From the airport to Tahoe was like an absolute adrenaline rush of going <laughs> a million miles an hour, passing people in no passing zones with an aggressive Uber driver. Who asked For those of you that never do. been to Tahoe, there's like one road into it and it is, it's through mountains that's curvy that you should not pass anyone. No, and you shouldn't. Jenna, Jenna, was in a taxi. To. Jenna was in a taxi with a NASCAR driver, apparently. Yeah, pretty much. But I made it alive, so that's good. But yeah, on the way home uh, with this or way to the airport with my taxi driver, he had asked me, you know, why I was in Tahoe and stuff. I'm sure expecting me to say like, oh, I'm here to do outdoor stuff, which I'm like, absolutely not. But I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm they, at they don't know you well yeah, enough. If they're asking I'm you. indoor Barbie. Absolutely not. And so I told him, I was like, actually, I'm here for a conference, a real estate conference. He's like, oh, that's cool. How was it? And I was like, honestly, it was amazing. And I was like, here's the thing that's so cool about this event. I've been to a lot of different events, you know, and people really just go to get away from their family or whatever, and they want to go drink and party. And it's their excuse to just like dissociate from the world. But I'm like, but this group of people, that's not who they are. Like yep. we are in it. We're learning. We're contributing. When we leave the room, we're learning. We're contributing. We're plugged in. We're not here to get drunk and be stupid. We're here to, to really take things back because all of us have a united mission to give back to others, whether it's in our industry, in the areas that we serve as team leaders, as operations, whatever title we are, that's our unified mission. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, it's just such an impactful event because of that. I love that. And that reminds me of, of something that I wanted to chat about earlier and I got distracted. Um, but so that event, that room, that community, I believe, and I've learned this from this room, um, is that leadership is a mirror, meaning that part of your job as a leader is to help model and demonstrate the behaviors you expect or, or desire. And what is really cool about that room, and it shows the character of someone like John Cheplak, is the community that he's built and attracted are people of that caliber in a space where that's not normal. Right. And like, I think all of us, first and foremost, if you're listening to this, a reminder to you that everyone is a leader to someone in their life. There are people that look up to you. There are people that are following you. You don't need a title. You don't need a team. You don't need any of that to be a leader. You are a leader. So if you put your leader hat on and realize that, one of the things that makes that Jenna unpack that makes that environment different because of the leader facilitating that environment, it's implied accountability. If people show up there and they're the, and I don't mean this in a derogatory way, because like there's great people that do this, right? Sometimes people need to unplug, but I will just tell you, those people don't come back to the second event usually. Right. Um, because like, are there people that drink? Are there people that have fun? Sure but they're still also the first ones in the seat the next day and they're still taking notes. And there's like, I've been to events where like in the afternoon, everyone's gone because they're at the bar, right? Like 
and I'm not saying in a judgment, judgmental way. I'm just saying that there's a reason that these are the highest performers in the world. And it's a lot of it has to do with the environment and the culture and the community that is built because of John Chaplack's leadership. And I think there's something that we can all take away from that is, is if we, whatever is missing in our environment and our community that we, whether it's at home, whether it's with family or friends, or maybe it's your business, whatever the things are that are missing, I would encourage you to hold up the mirror and look and say, where are those missing in my life that I can help instill that in my environment, my community, so that we have the implied accountability of that's just what we do here, right? Like the implied accountability of this room is this is not a drinking partying event. This is a get shit done event. We're high performers. Yeah, we're going to chit chat. We're going to have fun. We're, I'm, we hiked a damn mountain. Like there's all kinds of fun things to do. But we're here to learn and we're here to get better and we're here to be better. And we're here to actually contribute first because we know if we give, we will get. And how can we apply that in any aspect of our life? I think like that's probably not where we're going to go with this podcast, but I think that that just popped in my head and I wanted to share that because I think that will impact everyone in any aspect of their life if they really understand that and apply that. Yeah. And it's really just like he's applying it, evaluate the rooms you're in, evaluate the people that are around you. If they're not emulating the kind of life that you want in two, five, however many years, then why are you wasting your time? I'm not saying you need to cut everybody out of your life, but the people that you're allowing in your inner circle, you have to be mindful of those people and if they are emulating what you're wanting. 100%. All right, Jenna. Guide us through. What would you like to go next? Well, I want to circle back with copywriting um, because I, I think with it being such a big theme, giving the listeners and stuff some tactical stuff so you guys can implement go. it too. The go. biggest stuff is keep it simple. Write like you talk. Don't mm. try to gussy it up. I like to do that. Don't be like Jenna. Uh, yeah. Jenna has Jenna has her own verb. I call it Jennify. Don't yes. Jennify it. It doesn't need to be Jennified all the time. It's jazzed, um, but, but uh, keep it simple. Talk, write like you talk. Um, focus on your hook. Tell a story. That that's your big connection. And then the big thing is, um, it's kind of I think Gary V says that it's the jab, 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 right hook. Yep. Value, value, value. Then ask. If you're all you're doing is asking all the time, you're drowning people out. You're they're they're not going to listen. You've got to provide value. Like what we've talked about this whole time so far, con contribute. Like yep. you have to contribute back, give them value, and then you can ask for something. You have to be willing to also go against society's normal of instant gratification and realize that these things have a delayed gratification effect. Let me give you a real, I'll just be very transparent. This podcast, I spend my a lot of time, a lot of resource, um, and a little bit of money to provide this value and content for over two years now. I'm not asked for anything in return. For the first two years, I didn't get much in return. But over time, we've got like, I don't know, we'd have to check, but like 40,000 plus downloads. I had so many people come up to me at this event. People reach out every week thanking me for something, right? It's just like selfishly, I love giving, right? Like it's weird. Um, but I just, I, I'm addicted to helping more people, which is a, I have addictive personality. I could be addicted to way worse, right? So um, I love it. Um, but the the point being is how many, there's a stat out there. I don't know the numbers, but um, it's an overwhelming, I think it's like over 90% of podcasts don't make it past three episodes, right? Like, and how many of you will make a, and let's apply that to now. And I say this like humbly, and I'm so blessed. I'm at a spot where I'm turning coaching clients away because I just don't have the capacity and I'm blessed to have that. Right. But we're, if I were to ask all of my coaching clients, Hey, what made you pull the trigger? It's either the Cheplak community and the value they provided or the content that I've provided. Like that's it. And it's, so it, it all works itself out over time. And so how can we apply that to what Jenna's talking about in copywriting? Don't make one post for a week and be like, Oh, Oh, it only got two likes. I'm going to give up like you have to do this consistently over time. And I'll let you in on a secret too. 
there are people watching you that aren't liking your post. Like I remember specifically at this event, someone came up to me and thanked me for a post that I made because it really, really helped impact them. I went back and looked, it had eight likes and they weren't one of them. So we assume they didn't see it, but that's not the reality, right? People are busy. Um, by the way, you should start liking all the people that you are following to give you contributions because it helps more people see it and it encourages them to give back at a higher level. And by the way, they'll start seeing your stuff more. Anyway, algorithm stuff for later. But um, that's how you can contribute to those contributing to you, by the way. Um, anyway, the point being is we give up way too soon. You have to practice. You have to have the discipline to practice delayed gratification. And let's be honest. If you're doing a podcast, if you're doing a post to get likes, to get people to buy something, it's probably not going to work anyway. Don't get me wrong, I'm in a for-profit business and I'm a capitalist. I want you all to, I think everyone should have more money. So I'm not against money. Money's not evil. What all that, I'm not against any of that, right? But you have to make sure that you are doing things for the right reason with contribution in mind. Not, hey, I'm going to do this because I'm going to make a lot of money doing it. Like you have to, you have to go deeper than that and you have to contribute and realize that it takes time. Don't give up too soon. Yeah, I think one thing uh, I remember Chet Black saying was that you can expect 50% of your marketing to work and 50% of it to not work um, because marketing is is it's trying things and seeing it didn't work. Okay, let's try yep. it this way. It's data driven. You're you're looking at the analytics of things. You're seeing what people are responding to and you're shifting and you're making little tiny adjustments, but 50% of it's just not going to work, but you're not going to know what works, what 50% is going to work. If you just don't do it and you give up because something didn't work. hundred percent. I'm going to, I'm going to add something else to that. Um, Andy Frisella, who's someone else I follow and has helped me learn a lot and been a great, big contributor in my life. He's an extremist, right? Um, but I love him for it. Um, he's, I'm going to quote, I'm going to paraphrase something that he says in the lesson I've learned from him is 50% of people are going to love you and 50% of people are going to hate you. Fuck the 50% that are going to hate you. Who cares? Quit trying to make people happy that don't want to be happy. Quit trying to get people to like your message that aren't going to like your message. If they're not in alignment, spend your time, your energy, your focus on the people that are in alignment with you that that are like find your audience find your tribe by being authentic and genuine and being authentically you and you do it consistently over time giving to give writing how you speak talking how you talk like you will attract the right people over time and if there's people maybe that's an extremist right not, not everybody's going to hate you that doesn't like you Right. It's okay to disagree with people in today's society. Newsflash. You can actually disagree with people and still have respect and like them. It's crazy. I know, but you can. Um, anyway, uh, the, the point being is like you quit trying to make everyone like you. Like they're not going to. And that's okay. You're not for everyone. I'm not for everyone. That's fine. But the people that do follow my message and that do align with it, I want to do everything in my power to give them as much value as I possibly can. And I think if you just think with that mindset, um, it will really, really have an impact on your influence in whatever leadership capacity or lesson or value or whatever it is that you're working through. Because copyright can help you sell more real estate, can help you get more listings, can help you get more buyers, can help you get more recruits, can help you get more coaching clients, can help your business grow, can help your social media grow, you name it. Copywriting can do all of that. Email can do all of that. But you have to give to give. Um, one of the things that uh, Jenna said, you have to write like you talk. I'm going to give you a pro tip for those of you that are struggling with that. There's all kinds of technology out there now. So come up with like bullet points or a topic or something that you want to write to your audience about. And if you struggle writing, pick up your phone, either do a voice memo or probably do a video would be best. Do a video and then transcribe the video. Now you have two pieces of content from the same thing. You have a video talking about the thing and then you want to write like you, you want to write like you speak, transcribe the video with AI that will transcribe exactly what you said, make adjustments in grammar, et cetera, 
but that's how you talk. Now write that way. So if you're struggling with like writer's block or writer's cramp, over time it'll get better and your writing will help your videos improve. And so you can play off of each other there. But if you're struggling to get started, just talk and then take the things that you said and turn them into writing. Absolutely. Cool. Let's get to some tactical stuff. All right, Captain. I'll let you lead us. Um, well, I'm looking at your stuff. I know database is a big thing that you had as had takeaways for who owns it, the execution of it. There was so much um tactical stuff in database. Yeah, first and foremost, if you don't have a database, you need one. Second, um, I, literally, I was on a call. <laughs> I'm going to call him out. I love him to death. One of the guys that has taught me so much about the database, I was on a call with him this morning, Travis Halverson. With, he's our DCM with, um, what is their company called? Digital Maverick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Digital Maverick. Um, also, Easy Home Search. Shout out to those guys. They're phenomenal. Yeah. Um, but that's who that's one of the people that spoke on database management. I took a lot of notes and it's something I'm really passionate about because I believe if you treat your database like it's a huge asset, it will become one. And he said he he asked me, he said, because he was at this event. It was so funny, Jenna. And we were on our call weekly call going through our database. He said, dude, have you seen my copy lately? What he's asking for feedback. Right. I'm like, dude, it's killer. Great job. Keep it up. I'm like, how, how are your emails going? And he was like deer in the headlights. He's like. I don't have a database to email, dude. And I hammered him. Um, I'm like, man, how many people have booked a discovery call with you that are not signed up? He's like, a lot. And then the light bulb went off. He's like, mm -hmm. damn it, that's an excuse. I'm like, there you go, man. Right? So we all have to, what if we built a database strategically? No matter what space you're in, the people that raise their hand, the people that are curious, the people that are just nosy, Build a database strategically with them, provide them value over time, and then they go from curious to considering. Let me give you a marketing perspective. I got this from John Cheplak. At any given time, 95% of people in the curiosity stage. They don't make decisions when they're curious. But you need to get, if you spoke to your audience like they were all curious, a lot more of them will be considering using you. Only 5% of your audience at any given time is in the consideration phase, meaning they're in the decision-making phase. We try to talk to people that are in the decision-making phase way too much. That's 5% of your audience. Talk to the 95 and watch your business explode. Sorry, I don't know where we were going with that. That just story came up that I wanted to share. And that Travis, I love you, but I hope that helps you crush email, bro. That was awesome. Yeah, yeah, I think um, this is a very specific plug for a database, but um, Ryan Young spoke. Um, How killer he, was his presentation? Holy crap. You know, there's every event, there's someone that speaks that I'm like, you are so smart. Like, I can't <laughs> even, you are so smart. <laughs> Ryan was one of those people this time where I was like, holy crap, you're smart. Like, uh, But yeah, his his presentation was phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. For those of you who don't know, Ryan Young is, um, he runs the Young team in Ohio. He's the number one large team by Real Trends in Ohio. Um, so he runs a real business. It's a listing-based business. And that listing-based business over the years, he found an opportunity to create something that he did internally. Now he's sharing with everyone. We use it. Um, it's become, I think, the number one seller lead generation platform, which is way more than just lead generation. It's lead nurturing. Blah, blah, it's a lot of things, uh, but it's called Fellow. Uh, if you don't use that, reach out to me. I'll give you a link. Um, it's killer, 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 killer. You want to talk about ROI for getting seller business? That's the secret. Um, anyway, um, he what he shared and broke down was the value of your database, but also being intentional with your database, right? Like how, and I don't want to get super analytical because a lot of you are listening um, on this, but. I think the lesson that I could share is number one, do you have an intentional business with your database? And are you intentional with your planning of who you're trying to, who, who is your target audience specifically? Buyers or sellers? What area? What price point? What is your percentage of business in each area? Um, where are you most profitable? Where Where is your quote unquote sweet spot, right? And I think just unpacking the database at a very, very high level um, well, he went very granular, granular, right. Which I think you should too, but for the podcast, like just 
understand your database at a higher level of where where your sales coming from, where do you want your sales to come from in the future? Uh, do you actually own your database? Do you like, as an example, he was talking about building a seller-based database. Here's a fun stat for you. 5% of your database will sell their home in the next 12 months. So let's do some quick math. We have a database of like 58,000 people. Mm -hmm. let, me do, let me get my calculator. 58,000 times 5%. That means 2,900 people will sell their homes this year that are already in my system. Do I need to go buy more seller leads or do I just need to be intentional with the people that are already in my database? It was, it's a huge, and by the way, I'll do both, right? But I think it's just an opportunity for us to really make more out of the opportunities that we have and treat our database like it's the most valuable asset and then it will become that. Yeah. I mean, you look at the teams who have completely cut lead spend, you know, that are number one teams. How yeah. do they continue that? They work their database the way that they, that's, that it's been intended to. And if you're, if you're listening to this and you're like, okay, I hear all this, but where, where the heck do I start with database? Like I'm, I'm confused. Honestly, you just start with curiosity. Um, that's where all of this starts is I wonder like what my demographic is of what, um, how many people are buying at this price range and what is my ROI on this and where's this lead source? How is it being handled? Like the more questions you're asking and digging, the more you'll find those gaps and be able to fill them. And, but you just have to be curious first. Yeah. You have to be curious, but also let's go back to the takeaways from this event. Like the database, you can go down rabbit holes. And trust mm -hmm. me, I've been, and I still go. You, if you are if you don't see Jenna's face, she's like, oh, me too. Um, and so there's all kinds of rabbit holes that you can go down. But let's start with what, let, let's, I'm going to give you guys a playbook. If I were you and you've not done this yet, where should you start? And I'm going to make this up on the fly because we're going to do this alongside you. But um, as I'm brain dumping out loud on a podcast, how's that for real? Um, I, think I, step one, notes. <laughs> I think step one is let's go, let's look at a closing report for the last 12 months. Where did those closings come from? Go source them. Where did they come from specifically? Then source, what area are they in? Then source, what price point? Were they a buyer or seller? And kind of look over the last 12 months of your business without being intentional, because I'm assuming like most of you are like me and you're not, you're not at Ryan's genius level being super intentional. Let's source where we actually are getting business currently. Let's start there. Again, what lead sources, what is the, um, what area, what price point, buyer or seller, what is maybe the commission rate? If you're a team leader, what is the profit on the buyer or seller side? What is the return on investment for those leads that are converting at the highest level? And you'll probably have leads in there that you don't, you don't really know. It's hard to source. Yes, I get it. It's hard to source. Here's how I run my business. How did it, how did it get in my world? And we don't change the source. How did it get in my database? So if it was in my database from Google pay-per-click and then it came through Zillow, Google, Google pay-per-click gets the check mark in our business. There may be people way smarter than me that say, hey, that's wrong. You should do it this way. Cool. You're right. I'm not arguing with you. That's just how I'm, I, how I'm doing it because I want to know how did they get in front of my world? Right. If we do the recent activity thing, we're always switching sources and we don't know if they the emails, whatever. Right. And so that's just how I choose to run it as a simplified version. So once you source that, pick out your top three lead sources. Let's say you closed hundred houses and let's say 25 of them were from XYZ lead source. Go see how much you spent on XYZ lead source. Go see in the zip code you're spending, go see your ROI on that. And do you need to reinvest more into that moving forward for your growth plan? Or is you have a, maybe you're having a lot of closings, but it's the cost per leads too high. Right. Like let's start there and analyze. And what I think you will find is that you are seeing as you break this down, because what I would do is let's say those 25 people, I'm going to pull up their follow up boss and I'm going to look at the, their lead activity. And I'm going to see that they came at Google pay per click, but they also registered in realtor.com. They registered in Zillow. So I paid for that lead three times. I'm also probably going to see that they've, they have, they've opened eight of my last 12 emails. Right. So like my brand recognition helped with all of that, which is cool. So it's impossible to source everything to just one thing. So I'm going to take note of all of that because there's an art to it, not just science. But um, back to the science of it. Now, once you understand and you know that data, 
I think it's really important and what fellow has really helped us with in, in um, Ryan Young's master class that he shared um, from the stage in Tahoe. Are you being intentional with your database because your database has a lot of homeowners? Do you know who the homeowners are? And are you sending proper messaging to those homeowners? Are you treating those homeowners like their leads? Because one of the things I preach all the time to all of my agents is every homeowner is eventually a seller. So how can we provide them value over time whenever they're ready to sell that we're the obvious first choice, right? Um, and so there's so many ways that you can do that. But I think just being intentional with your database and unpacking, if you, you can't build a plan moving forward if you don't know how you got where you're at. And I think that's step one. Jenna, you're kind of um, knee deep in some of this um, from the marketing perspective. Anything to add there that maybe I missed? Honestly, I think that's pretty much a masterclass in and of itself. Um, and what I'm going to do too, so long, unless if Matt says, Jenna, shut up, don't do that, is um, I'm going to, I've got notes of all that. I'm going to make a lead magnet. Uh, so you guys listening have a one sheeter of everything Matt just went over. Um, you can reference it, implement it in your business. Um, and that way you don't have to listen to this 8,000 times to remember all of it. So we'll get you a one sheet. Love it. Absolutely. Let's give it. I love it. Great stuff. Um, all right. Some other stuff, database moving on. Um, we, we're limited for time here. There's, we could do like the whole year of podcasts on this event. Yeah. That's how good it was. Um, but I think really, really quickly on database. Number one, who owns it? Who owns your database? Who is the owner? Well, this person does this and that person does that. And we just assume this. Nope. One owner. I learned in EOS, two equals zero. If you have more than one owner, no one's accountable. And then it's pointing the finger. Um, so you need one owner. That means there can have a lot of hands in it, but there's one person responsible. Who owns your database? Is it clear what that means? What do they? What does that mean when they own the database? Are there reports they run monthly? Is there responsibilities around lead checks or lead sweeps or um, average contact attempts or follow-ups based upon who's in the agent's database? In our world, we run a money time pond. Do we have accountability around what that process looks like? And if you, if you do this, this happens. You have all those workflows to treat your database like it's the most valuable asset in your business. Because if you do, it will become that. And you need a clear owner of that. Second, this was very interesting. I think everyone can learn from this. So this is from um, Digital Maverick. Travis Halverson shared this from stage. They are in over 80 of the top databases in the world. Every single day, helping them with conversion, with ISA, database conversion management, um, all kinds of like smart list, all this stuff. They're, they're genius. That's what they do. Okay. And what he said is that across all those 80 databases, there's one consistent theme. The average touch per lead to closing is 26. That's the average. How many of us get a lead that come in and they're ready to go buy today and we go show them property and now they're under contract? That's less than 26. Probably a lot of them. So that also means the opposite is also true that there's a lot of them that take 50 plus touches to close. And so I think it's just a reminder, especially in today's world, you don't need more leads. You need to call less leads more. The quality of the lead is determined by the follow-up and the skill set of the agent that has it, period. And I say this with all the respect in the world. If you give me a lead and you give an agent that doesn't follow up, doesn't know scripting, doesn't have skill, the same lead, you do that a hundred times, I'm going to out-convert them 10x plus. It's the same lead. And you probably would do the same, right? And so I say that to give you a different perspective of we're chasing more leads or better leads, and that's not the answer. It's you need to convert leads better. That's the name of the game. And that's what owning your database really helps you with. Um, another thing, like another, oh, go ahead. Okay, it's just like, and this is kind of the alignment that I was talking about, but it just, it's just like what we said with copywriting, you can't give up too soon. If you are following up, and that's where I think a lot of people struggle, you follow up once, twice, five times, and they say no each time, and you just are like, well, 
this sucks. Never mind. I'm done. Like you've given up way too soon at that point. So well, that's like let's, part of that let's get in the head of the consumer. What's going on in today's society? This isn't a follow up podcast, but this is important. I want you guys to have value from this. And if you're an agent that gets stuck here, I get it. I am an agent. I have a real estate license. I prospect alongside my team yesterday and I'm doing call night with them tonight. I get it. I'm in the trenches with you. But the difference between you and I is I understand at an in-depth level, it is my job to follow up with them. It is not their job to follow up with me. If selling real estate was as easy as I pick up the phone and they say, I'm ready to go look at houses, we wouldn't, we like, I wouldn't have a podcast because everyone would sell real estate, right? Like it's just, that's not the game. That is not how this business works. And like, here's an analogy. I think shoe stores still exist here and every now and then. Um, I buy all mine online, but I think they still exist. Um, and so back in the day, I remember my mom used to take me shopping for high school every year, back to school shopping. And I got a new pair of shoes every year. When we walked in the shoe store, I can still smell it, right? The leather when you walk in, you know, smell of a shoe store. Mm -hmm. So when you walk in the shoe store and the doorbell, the ding, ding, you walk in. What is What do they say every time when you walk in, Jenna? How can I help you? And without, well, without fail, they say, how can I help you? Oh, I'm just looking. Guys, I walked in a shoe store knowing I was going to buy a new pair of shoes, exactly what size I am, exactly what brand I need. I know exactly what I'm there for. And I tell them I'm just looking. These leads are in your shoe store. They raised your hand. And so if you realize that and you could just adjust your mindset, and you can provide value, you can give and give and build depth of relationship, build rapport, build trust and deposit into that person, then you can ask for a withdrawal. And I think it's so important that we just realize that analogy with if we want to convert leads at a higher level, like that's the secret. What is your average? And I'll tell you something else. Here's, here's another thing. This wasn't at the event, but it's the same topic. We We had a call with someone else that is kind of the script queen or conversion queen of the same company. Absolutely blew me away. Phenomenal, by the way. Shout out to Nikki. You're amazing. But she said that there's one commonality in these 80 databases, 80 plus that they manage of the top agent on all of those teams have one thing in common. Their average contact attempt per lead is higher than everyone else. Success leaves clues. Quit trying to call more leads and speed and spread. You need less leads. You need to understand their motivation. You need to build depth of relationship and help guide and lead them through the process. That's how you sell real estate. If you don't make that adjustment, you're going to struggle in this market. All right. Um, we're all over the place today. I think this is my show, right? I'm not following. I'm not following. Jenna built a framework and everything. And I'm like, oh, I'm way well, off. Well, actually, I was going to say, I actually think that this is the perfect transition to the other big thing. I think both of you or both of us got away from. Uh, got out of this event, um, which is agent, like leadership to agent relationships and yeah. agent accountability. And the reason why it's such a great transition, the way you're speaking about, you know, how we are to nurture leads, you know, uh, that depth of relationship, oh following up with them, having that engagement with them, like it mirrors perfectly to leadership to agents and how we're, we need to be interacting with our agents too. Really, really good. Um, funny enough, I had a coaching call this morning with a brand new coaching client that um, hired me at that event. And he's just he's, he's just really struggling personally. Um, and he's frustrated with his agents and they're not doing this and they're not doing that. And we really we had a really, really personal conversation, went depth um, and, and helped him afterwards. Like he was just down in the dumps afterwards. He was smiling and he was just full of energy. He's like, we got a plane. Let's go execute, um, which is why he's successful. But what we unpacked is leadership's a mirror. And so what Jenna just said is everything that I just shared about following up with buyers and sellers. If you are a leader listening, all of those same things apply because your agents are your buyers and sellers. And so um, one of the things that I had as an aha, because in Tahoe, I actually went, so I'm, I am an outdoors person. Um, and I just, I have, you guys can probably imagine I'm just on the go all the time. And so what I did between bef the day before the event is I went and Tahoe is beautiful. And so I went and I just 
kind of, I said, I'm going to go walk some trails and I'm going to just get some me time. I don't do that enough. Um, and so what I did, usually I have a podcast going or an audio book and I'm just learning. And I said, I'm not bringing any of that. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to be with myself, which for someone like me is really, really scary. Um, <laughs> just to be with myself. Cause my thoughts are scary. Um, but what I did was over time, like just being in nature, I just really unpacked, like, what is, what do I need to do? Where's the next step for me? What do I need to actually, what am I looking for from this event to go back and apply? And it was really simple. The aha that I had. And again, there's a big, long thought process to this, uh, many, many miles of, of hiking, but it's really, really simple. The answer I came up with is I've been coaching and preaching to my agents for 18 months now. You have to build depth of relationship. That's what wins. But I've gotten away from that as a leader and I'm focused on the process and I'm focused on their, their numbers and their KPIs and their scripts. And, and it was just a reminder to me as a leader is that. I need to practice what I preach and they are my clients. And so what am I doing to build depth of relationship with them? What is my app quote unquote average contact attempt per agent? How often am I communicating with them proactively on a human to human level, not just a coaching conversation. And um, there's a lot that I can unpack there, but I think it's really, really important that it's a lesson that we can all take away from that is that there are people that, again, everyone is a leader to someone and what are, how are we leading them? What are we doing to build better relationships with people? Because we're in the relationship business. Jenna, what are your thoughts? No, I think you said it beautifully. Um, I, I want to add so much to it, but I feel like it's such an important lesson and it's such an important takeaway that I would hate to drown any of that out um, because it's, it's truly so important, that depth of relationship. I think there's times and, and we, you know, we were running a business, like you want to be profitable, like Matt said, like you want to make money, like that's part of running a business. And so it's easy to get caught up in numbers and in analytics and in KPIs and performance and, and to get frustrated by those things sometimes too. It's easy to fall into that. Yep. But the, the key is, is lifting your head up every now and then looking in the mirror are you having empathy for your agents? There's one thing, uh, Mia did an amazing job. She's, uh, I think she's also with um, D Digital Maverick. I'm pretty sure. She's um, with Reside. Okay, Reside, sorry. She's the trainer with Reside, yeah. Gotcha. But she did a phenomenal job. One thing she said is she chooses to believe that everyone is doing the best um, they can at that moment in every interaction she has. That doesn't mean she doesn't uphold standards. That doesn't mean that she that there's no accountability but she believes that they are doing the best that they can. And I think that's such a great reflection for us as leaders. When we are interacting and okay. we're frustrated, do we believe the best about the person in front of us? I remember I wrote that down. I started, I circled it and I showed you my, my, my notes because we were sitting next to each other at the event. And like, we had the same aha there because I'll just be transparent. I'm guilty. Like, I don't always do that. Um, I say that, hey, I don't, there's no judgment, but sometimes I judge. I'm not perfect. I'm human. And it was just a reminder for me of stop fucking judging people. And if you're going to judge them, judge them at like, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt that they're doing the best they can with what they have right now. Right? Like not everybody can give hundred percent every day and everybody's hundred percent on today looks different than it may look tomorrow. Um, and uh, yeah, um, it's just, yes, you got to manage a business. Yes. You got to be smart. Yes. You got to be profitable, all those things. But it was a great reminder to me that, I built this company. I will chose to be a leader and I'm privileged and honored to be a leader because I want to have a positive impact in other people's lives. And I can't do that if I don't build relationships. You can't do that shit through a spreadsheet, right? You can't do that through a profit and loss statement. You can't do that through how well did you call your leads last week? You have to do that through relationships. And so I'm going to requote it, um, at least how I heard it from, from, I think it was Mia that said it, is at any given time, I choose to believe that they're doing, everybody's doing the best they can with what they have currently. Like we never know what someone's going through. And so instead of saying, oh, I wish Jenna would do more, instead change that and be like, I'm going to give Jenna the benefit of the doubt. And I think she's, I'm going to, she's, I believe wholeheartedly she's doing the best she can with what she has right now. Right. And if you just adjust that as a leader, it'll change everything. I, that was like, one of the big ahas that I had at that event that like, that's a game changer for me. It was just the right message at the right time. Yeah. Um, 
I'm looking through I'm looking through notes and I have the most notes off of one speaker. Jenna, you want to guess who that was? I'm gonna say either Ben Kinney or Brandon Brittingham. They were close, but Ben Kinney um, yeah. has the uh, has the lead. So Ben Kitty, for those of you who don't know, I don't know how many businesses he has, but his businesses are, last I heard, I may be misquoting this, but um, it's close. His businesses are evaluated over a billion dollars with a B. Um, and I've never, I never met the guy uh, until this event. I never heard him speak until this event. I've just heard of him. And um, so he runs Place. He runs, he has Brivity, the CRM, um, Land Voice, I think, and, and some other things. Um, I think he just bought Livian. Um, anyway, he's he's a leader, thought leader in the space and has been for many, many, many years. Um, and I got pages and pages of notes that I could share, but I think there's one thing, a couple of things I'm going to share. I'm just going to go through my notes quickly. And one, what he shared is a reminder for me because I'm in a small town and I have those limiting beliefs like everyone else does. And we're at 20% market share in our marketplace, been number one, seven, eight years in a row. I have people all the time, Matt, when's enough enough? My own teammates, right? And like they say it with love because like I'm just, I push really, really hard because I want people to be the best that they can be. And he said one of his secrets to, I don't remember the question, but here's my notes that I wrote word for word. If you care about your people, it is selfish of you to stay small. Grow big enough so that it allows the people you care about to live their dreams inside of your world. That's powerful, right? Really, really powerful. Um, let's see, Jenna, I would love for you to unpack the, I believe you role play that he did. Yeah, that was huge. Um, yeah. One thing he had said is when you're, um, speaking with someone and they're like, yeah, I want to, I want to do this. I'm going to try to do this. Um, you respond with, are you going to try or are you going to, do you want to, or are you going to promise me that you're going to do it? And if they say, yes, I, you know, I promise you, I'm going to do it. And you say, okay, I believe you. Let me know when you get it done. I believe you. He said, so I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to re-say that again. Right. And I want to, I'm going to, I want you guys to listen to my tonality, my pacing, because I think that's an important part of this, that leaders overlook again, to John Cheplak's credit, tiny hedges swing big doors. And so if you're a leader listening, this is crucial. So Jenna um, makes a commitment to me, right. For our, our organization would be a goal setting. It would be a, maybe a one-on-one, -on -one. it would be a go to the board, that type of business relation, business partnership conversation about like a commitment that they're making. And Jenna commits to doing X, Y, Z. And most of the times, again, vagueness kills progress. And the agent, Jenna, in this case, would give a vague answer. It is my job to help her make that specific and measurable, right? Specific and measurable. But as I'm going through that process, a lot of times agents say things like try or I'd like to. And um, what Ben represented is a leadership language. And he said something to the effect of, is that something you're going to try to do or are you going to commit to? I think he even used the word promise. Are you going to prompt? Can you, are you going to prompt? Will you promise me that you will do that? And then when they say yes. So um, Jenna, is that, is that something that you're going to try to do? Or is that something you're going to promise me you will get done? I promise I'm going to do it. I believe you look them in the eyes, slow down, no other distractions, drop everything that you're doing and give them that bar of belief. You know how many people talked about human psychology before the call and on this call, but I think it's so important in leadership. And I think it's so important in this discussion. How many people have never been told that before? How many times as leaders do we find the gaps and the things we want to improve? And that versus how many times have we give the, instilled the bar of belief that we have in them to do what they say they want to do? I think our scales are um, are not where they need to be. I know mine certainly are, and so it was a big, really big aha for me. Um, it's no no wonder to me why he's been able to build what he's built just by hearing him speak on stage. The way that he thought through those things, the way that he answered them, and just the leadership skills that he has developed like was really, really something to model and emulate. I want to also, I want to say, and again, I've got six pages of notes just on his, his talk was like 30 minutes. Right. Um, and it was a, it was a Q and a from him between him and John. It was really, really good. But he said, he told a story around Braveheart. First and foremost, John Cheplak has never watched the movie Braveheart. Um, fun fact, but the, um, 
But what he said was like, as, and he told, he's a great storyteller, by the way, which a lot of great leaders are, which is something I'm working on as well. Um, But he, he said, and I'll make this shorter. Right. Um, But it was, he told a story around which leader would you follow? Right. And he, he told it like, he referenced the, the movie Braveheart. He's like, and so you got this side over here. That's got, you're working for, the king or whoever and the king sitting way back in the back and he's held up by people are holding him on his shoulder and his big throne and he's sitting back eating grapes drinking wine saying you go do this archers go right what it, like it's in the movie right we've all seen it and or would you rather follow the follow would you follow the leader that has is, is the front of the line he's wearing a kilt which is weird but he's the front of the line he's got his face painted blue and he's like all right, guys, on three, go with me. I'm leading the charge, and he's the first one to run. Which leader would you rather follow? Which leader do you think is going to have a bigger impact on people's lives? No matter what the odds are. I think it's really important that we unpack and, and see which type of leader we are. I think we're all guilty of time sitting back eating grapes. So go, go get some blue face paint. Go make some shit happen. All right, cool. What else, Jenna? There's so much. I got so I many notes. I honest. Oh, um, the only other big Brandon Brittingham did an amazing job. Um, I got a lot of stuff out of him. Honestly, one big takeaway I had out of all this, and this is kind of vulnerable. Um, it's something I think maybe others could relate to, but I know I get to a place where uh, Brandon Brittingham said procrastination is a form of depression. Mm -hmm. And I get to a place where maybe I'm overwhelmed. Um, I'm down. Life is hard. Um, things are happening and I procrastinate, but not only do I procrastinate, I also recluse. And that's something that I identified by like about myself in this event is how much I recluse when that happens. And then when I'm in this recluse state and in this procrastinating state, I get frustrated and I say, I feel so lonely. Why don't I have, like, I need more support. Where's like my team and all this stuff, like maybe not like quite like that, but I feel really lonely and I feel really isolated. But meanwhile, I've got 24 unread text messages right now. I have 33 missed calls. I have all sorts of things that are available to me through this Chet Black community that I have not optimized. I have chats that I don't respond to right away, emails I don't get to. Um, and all of that to say that just, it really helps me see, okay, I need to take ownership of my life and I need to take more ownership of my circumstances and quit living like in this victim kind of mindset that I didn't even really realize I was in take ownership and pursue the opportunities that are in front of me because the life vests are there. Like yeah. there are so many life vests in front of me and I'm just choosing in my procrastination is depression to just ignore all of them and, and wallow. Really good. So much I could unpack there, but you said it really, really well. Um, I think that a lot of us, can make excuses to ourselves no matter what level we're at no matter what our title is no matter no we just all have a form of procrastination or a form of maybe we can't get everything done in a day that's okay did you get the most important things done right um i think there's a difference in urgent and important and um i think that yeah there's a lot i can unpack there but really well said um, I'm going through my notes on Brandon Birdingham because again, it was it was so good. Like, dude had me crying like three different times. Um, and let's talk about contributor. I also went to him afterwards and said, dude, thank you. Appreciate you sharing that. Like, it was great. Like, I've got so many notes and I'm going to watch it again. Um, and I asked him some questions about his investment companies that he has. He said, dude, let's just jump on a call. He's like, what's your struggle? And I told him, he's like, oh, I'll give you the playbook. I got a call with him later today. It's going to help us take the next level in our investment business that we started as a syndication to give back to our agents that we're just kind of at a stuck finding properties. Like, dude, I'll help you. I got you. You're, you will not have a problem finding properties anymore. I've got the playbook for free, right? Just contribution. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's the kind of people that spoke on the stage. 
I mean, he also talked about being a savage a lot, right? Like mm -hmm. that was that was kind of part of one of his themes. But he also said you can be empathetic and you have to have empathy and you have to be an empathetic leader. But who in the world said, and I'm going to paraphrase, I think a lot of times we play by rules that don't exist. And why do we play by the rule that you can't, you either have to be either empathetic or savage? Why can't you be both? Right. Depending on the, t the, depending on the, the situation, depending on the person, depending on the time, like, I think you can be both. And um, yeah. Um, he also talked about planting seeds of belief of people. It's not what you say, it's what they experience. So again, the, I believe you. Um, Jenna, any takeaways there that you had? Those were my biggest takeaways with him, the belief, empathy, and procrastination being a form of depression. Um, empathy is just one of those things that you're, I mean, we heard over and over and over again of the importance of empathy. It's something that we hear also in every coaching call that we have with John Cheplak, if that also shares the importance of empathy in today's uh, climate. But um, empathy has been such a big theme. He also talked a lot about emotional maturity. Mm -hmm. That's more like agents need it too. emotional intelligence, emotional maturity agents. The more that you focus on those, the more business you will have promise you. Um, that's a huge, huge needle mover, but especially for leaders as well. And I think understanding those things and being at a higher level than those that you were leading in those categories, because you need to have, you need to have such a depth of understanding so you can meet them where they are in their journey of that. I think is a huge, huge takeaway that I had from that. Um, so much. This was something that struck me personally. Um, and he was talking about his his grandpa, right? But I I just referenced it to my life, and he was talking about the lessons that he learned from his grandpa, and the lessons that he learned that instilled into him values and principles and and things that allowed him to accomplish and become the person that he is today. And it, I wrote down literally. Um, he talked about, he used the word inheritance and so many people, um, equate that to money. He's like, but I quit, I, I inherited so much more than that from my grandpa. As a matter of fact, I didn't inherit a dime, but what I inherited from him was so much more impactful and valuable. And so my question I wrote to myself is what are my kids going to inherit from me? Not money, but what, like what specifically? And I made myself a to do write this out, like in a vision board. What do I want my kids to inherit from me? Um, I think that that's, that was really big. Give people their flowers while they're alive. That's something I struggle with. Um, I think that's so important give people their flowers, meaning tell them the great things that they, that they have done, that they, who they are, all the, like just find reasons to, because we, if you're in a business ownership, a, a high performer, I think it comes natural. Um, and I used to say, this is a gift that I have. I don't think it's a gift. I think it's just what I focus on. Um, at least that's the language I'm I'm telling myself. So hopefully I change. Um, is that like the gaps and the things that people can do to improve? And I'm never gonna not help people grow and improve. But also, what if I spent more time, energy, intent, and focus on finding people understand their superpowers, finding people understand what they do really, really well. Um, I just don't think we spend enough time doing that. Um, and that's something I'm gonna focus on. So give people their flowers while they're alive. So much good stuff. Um, Jenna, what else? How would you like to close this out? There's so many things we covered in here. Um, and if you are feeling anything like how we feel at these events, it can be overwhelming. Um, and just going back to the beginning, execute and pick like a couple things and implement them. Pick a couple things and go all in master what you're already doing. Don't try to overhaul everything, um, but just execute at a high level. Pick just a couple of things from this. Yeah. Um, I hope this resonated with you guys. Um, if there's any questions you have, don't say to reach out. I'm here to help. Uh, Jenna's here to help. I see her nodding her head. She's nodding very loudly. I can see her. Um, you guys may not be able to hear it. Uh, but uh, we're, we're here to help. We're here to contribute. So um, if you have any other questions on any of this, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, uh, Jenna, can we email out that lead magnet to, if they're on the yeah. email list? Um, yeah. So we'll, we'll email that out. If you would like a copy, shoot me a message and we'll get it to you. Um, we'll try to attempt to maybe put the lead magnet so they can ground, download it in the show notes. Yeah, it'll be in the show notes. 
Okay, we'll do that as well. Um, and guys, this was I, this didn't go where I thought it would, which is great because I think it, I love where it went. Um, but uh, I hope you guys got value from this. This is our way of contributing to you. Um, just one last thing. I love the people that were at this event and the people that reach out to me sharing what their takeaways were, what their ahas were, what, what they maybe wanted more of, maybe even something they didn't like. All of that feedback is much appreciated. Um, I go at this blind week by week and think that I'm doing what you guys want to hear, but I want to hear from you. Good, bad, indifferent. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your perspective. Like I had, I think I had three different topics that people ask for me to break down on this podcast at the event. It's super helpful because I want to give you guys what you want to learn. Right. Um, and so, and I don't have all the answers, but I know people that do. And so maybe I can have them as a guest. Right. And so um, this podcast is, is contribution based. So let me know how I can contribute to you, how you can contribute to us. If we gave you value, share this with a friend. This podcast is growing. I love the growth. I love to see it. Um, so share this with a friend that you think it will help. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thank you, Jenna. Thank you.